chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into Sing that again. Then came the morning that sealed the 
Praise the Lord. Well, we have a great day today and um, no further announcements. No service this evening. Uh, please let anyone know you think it isn't here that may come. 
It usually happens. Someone doesn't get the message, they show up, and what a bummer, come all dressed up in the churches and open. On our agenda today, Pastor Martha, all the way from Indiana. Praise the Lord, Leamington Christian Center. Uh, we greet you in that mighty name that's above every name, which is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know this weekend is a special weekend as Pastor Dan and Kate begin to make a transition and your church begins to make a transition. We are the Kirkleys and we have been walking with you for some time. I am Pastor Bobby. I'm Pastor Martha. And we're glad to be here. Sorry we can't be there physically as we have wanted and desired to be there for this special occasion. But thank God for technology that allows us to come into your house anyhow even as an image, but the image is important. And we want you to let you know that we love you and appreciate you. We also believe that God is doing something great and mighty through this transition. And my wife is gonna to sing today, but we wanna encourage you today during this transition, give you a word and a song to be sung around you, to equip you, to let you know God is moving and moving mightily amongst you, changing order, directions, guidance, a new person, a new gifted person, a new order is coming in to the ministry. And it's coming in even into the community and the city and the town. So we're excited for Kate and all the things that's going to happen with her as she transitioned to this new position. We bless her and declare her blessed and highly favored. So therefore, I'll let Pastor Martha come forth and sing the song that she, God has put in her heart. And then I'll be back to minister the word of God. God bless you. Again, this is Pastor Martha and Leamington Christian Center. We greet you with love and so sorry that we cannot be physically there with you, but we are in spirit and in heart. And this is a season, uh, as it says in Isaiah, that old things are passed away and new things he is declaring today for Leamington Christian Center. We love you and there is a change taking place in the atmosphere. change in the atmosphere there is a change a change in the atmosphere there is a change a change a change in the atmosphere because the spirit of the living God he's moving in here there is a change a change taking place in the atmosphere there is a change a change in the Because the spirit of the living God, he's moving in here. There is a sifting and a shifting going on. There is a changing and a rearranging going on. There is a Taking place in the atmosphere because the spirit of the living God he's moving in here there is a shaking and a remaking going on there is a holding and a re Holding, going on. There is a 
Because the spirit of the living God, he's moving in here. There is an atmospheric shift taking place in the atmosphere. God's releasing his authority and power and grace in this place there is a change a change a change taking place today in the atmosphere because the spirit of the living god he's moving moving in here there is a change Leamington Christian Center taking place in the atmosphere yes. there is a change he's changing things in the atmosphere there is a change a change a change in the atmosphere will you let the spirit of the living god move like he wants to in here there is a change a change in the atmosphere <laughs> Can you feel the change that's taking place in the atmosphere? Today there's a change, a change, a change taking place in the atmosphere because the spirit of the living God, he's moved in here the spirit of living god is moving in Livingston christian center today as i've been praying for you to get ready in hopes to see your smiling faces but yet you can see my face anyhow today in my wife's face the lord was telling me he has sanctioned he has approved he has given his okay for this day to take place. It is no accident, it's no coincidence, it's not something that man thought of or did it happen because man wanted it to happen. This day took place of the transition that is taking place because God has ordained for this to take place. He wants the transition to take place for he has even greater purposes for the gift which is Kate that will step forward to lead the ministry in new dimensions and new areas that he wants to come into, that he wants to bring not only the ministry, but the community itself into new dimensions, new territories, new ways, new things that God has for this area of breakthrough specifically. Because within her is the word for this season and this time, for however long this is or how long this will be, God has put within her and putting her even now. Just like with Saul, it said that he went among the prophets. As he went among the prophets, he became another man. The Lord was telling me this morning, I'm getting ready to change Kate into another woman. A woman that many of y'all have married, never known. You have known her always as the assistant, always there doing, going about. She's only known herself this way but she's moving out of that place into a Moses place. See, Moses had the ability, even when Aaron and Marion sinned, Aaron said to Mary and Marion, and they got together and said to Moses, you're not the only one that hear from God. But the one thing I did notice about this, when you move into this singularity position with God, you have rights before God that others do not have. And you're moving into a place of position 
where God will speak to you from a whole different perspective. You have never learned, never known it, and never experienced it as you're getting ready to experience this new place. You have not been there before. Hallelujah. But you're going there now. And God is moving you today and position you where he has always wanted you even before you entered your mother's womb this is something god has ordained for you to happen and to be and to become with a people that will follow you that will go along with you for they will hear the voice of god in you jeremiah said but i'm just this moses said but i can't speak and he said who makes the mouth he said i'll be with you and i will speak to you and because I do those two things, you will be successful. And I'm saying to you today, Kate and Leamington, you will be successful. You have a foundation built already, and off of this foundation comes a new order. Moses and Joshua, Joshua had to build off of it, but yet Joshua had to be his own person. He was not a Moses, he was a Joshua. And I say to you, Kate, you're a Kate, not a Dan. Like your father, you're different. God's anointing is on you, just like he was on your father, just like he was on your mother, but you're your own person. And like I didn't get to finish, Moses and Aaron and his sister, they thought they could come up and speak. When, when, when his brother got in trouble, Aaron and his sister, and leprosy was struck upon them because of what they said to Moses. Aaron could not pray for, for her, his sister condition to change it took Moses to go before God and ask him to remove it there are certain places that people think they can go to with God that they cannot but when they violate these things it takes the leader who God has ordained to meet with him face to face and I say to you Kate you're moving into a different arena a different territory but God said he had sanctioned this way before you even came into your mother's womb to give forth birth. He sought this to you before you even think. He said, I finished you before I started you. He said, these things will come to pass. There is a new day. He said, keep your ear to his ear and he shall speak to you. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I give you praise for this day. We celebrate with heaven that your vessel is stepping forth that your vessel said yes, and everyone involved, his fa father said yes, and the congregation is saying yes, and heaven above is saying yes. Lord, we thank you for your spirit that will lead us and guide us into all truth, truth that shall make us free. We thank you also, Lord God, for the blood we appropriated in and around and through and over everything you make us steward over. Also, Lord, we thank you for your angels on assignment Lord God, we thank you for the angels that have been there since Kate birth. The angels that you have warred and fought for her. I declare that they will go into actions in ways she does not know of and begin to bring things to her that she needs. Lord God, she's a covenant woman based on a covenant that cannot be broken. We thank you for those angels. You say where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. So in James 1.17, it says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. He told me that you are a good gift and that you're the perfect gift for this time, this season that they are in. And you came from above and comes down from the father of lights. You came from your father with whom no variableness, neither shadow of turning. See, all great leaders are products of time and trophies of life's wars. You've had many wars to fight through, many battles, many ups and downs, and an answer from God, this it is, to the cry of the people. Every leader is a cry answered by God for the people. A leader is born, but a mature leader is formed and made over time's trials. You've had many, and God has made you. See, I say to you, Kate, you have gifts differing and there's a grace given to you and there's a faith for it to manifest. I declare the opening of you as they lay their hands on you and sanction you and declare whatever they will pray over you. Every leader, every leader is connected, listen to this, to a certain cry in the earth that is calling for his or her kind of leadership. 
Your leadership will not be your dad's. Your leadership will not be your mother. Your leadership will not be no one else. But there's a cry in the earth for you to come forth. And that cry has reached into God's ear and is now the time for you to manifest. You are answer to a cry in Leamington. You are answer to Canada. You are all those things because God summoned you according to the cry. And it said, now is the time. You are an answer. You are an answer to a cry. You may not have always heard it, but you've heard a cry in the people. You have seen the cry of the people struggle. Well, they can't seem to get a foot. They can't seem to overcome. But God is sending you even now to meet that demand. This is the key point I want to get to. The three phrases of a new beginning. You are in a new beginning. I'm coming to the end through this, but I want you to hear me carefully. There are three phases that you go through, and each one of y'all will go through these phases at different times of the ministry. Letting go of the old ways and the old identity people had. This is very serious. This is very hard sometimes for people. This first phase, a transition, is an ending. And the time when you need to help people to deal with their losses because many people will feel losses in the midst of letting go. Going through an in-between time, this is the next one. When the old is gone but the new isn't fully operational yet, we call this time the neutral time. The neutral time. It is when the critical psychological realignment and repattering take place. Next, the third place, coming out of the transition and making a new beginning. This is when people develop the new identity, experience the new energy, and discover the new sense of purpose that makes the change begin to work. Instructions during this time. You must follow your instructions. They are very important. Number two, have you completed your last instruction given to you in the last season? That is number two important. Number three, the following of the first instruction is important for you to be in the right position to be able to receive the next instruction from the Lord. Remember those three things. God is with us. His word is directing us. We must remember his word. Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 42, 9 says this, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them now. To make a new beginning, people need four Ps. The purpose, a picture, the plan, and part to play. I'll say it again. For the new, there are four P's that are important. Purpose, a new picture, the plan, and part to play. One of the terrible obstacles to too many beginnings is that there is no discernible purpose behind the purpose changes. The definition of the purpose of the new beginning must come from within him. In Christ, one of the terrible obstacles to many beginnings is that there is no discernible purpose behind the purpose changes. The definition of the purpose of the new beginning must come from within in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Purpose are critical in the beginning, but they are rather abstract. They are ideas, and most people are not ready to throw themselves into a difficult, risky understanding simply on the basis of an idea. They need something they can see. They need a picture of how the outcome will look. You have to work with this in the minds of the people. You have to work with these things I'm telling you, Kate. You have to work with the leadership. You have to work with the people to make sure this is there in the process of everything that's happening. They need a new picture. Every word is a word picture. 
You say house, you see a house. You see car, you see a house. You see a car. You say woman, you see a woman. There's a picture to every word. So the words that you will speak during these times will give the people a picture and they need a new picture. This picture in people's heads is the reality they live in. That's why it's important. And one of the losses that takes place during the ending phase of transition is that the old picture, the mental image of how and why things are the way they are, falls apart, which is supposed to. And you're supposed to replace it with a new picture. So I just say to you, Kate, I say to you, Pastor Dan and Pastor Kate, Leamington Church, Leamington City, I declare the blessings of the Lord upon you, that they will hunt you down, find you, and cause you to prosper in everything that you do. I pray that the Lord God will strengthen you with his grace. He said his grace is sufficient. Every time you look at Apostle Paul, he always answered grace. He speaks of the grace and even giving you salutations or speaking of greetings. He used the word grace because he understood I am what I am. By the grace of God, you will make it through because the kingdom of God is not regulated by what's around you. The kingdom of God has already been regulated. It's a kingdom and not a religion, and it's ready to move. He said the kingdom of God cometh and taketh by force. It demands, it's not trying to dwell with the possibility of the darkness of the enemy. So I just want to, we just want to encourage you, strengthen you. We want you to know we're excited about your transition. We're excited for the new. We're excited about what God's getting ready to do in the midst of you. And we're excited for the breakthrough that's coming to you, for you, in all the process. So we say we, just, we release our love, we release our blessings on Kate and all the other pastors that are there for her prosperity. We ask God to grant her the grace to be everything they need. In Jesus Christ's name, we thank you and love you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Bobby being our good friend and one of the greatest ministries to us in recent times is typical and the message was a lot longer than that. So we edited it down for the service, but the full message will be put on the internet on the app this afternoon and it'll be there. I want to thank the Lord for pastors Bill and Jan being here. We've known them for 30 years. I'm going to ask them to come and greet you quickly. They're going to come and help me pray at the end. Pastors Bill and Jan, just come and greet everyone. Uh, I met Bill, I think, 30 years ago or 31. And uh, we followed each other along the road. Come on up. And they've been really good, good friends to us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. Good to be with you today. Come on, honey. We can be six feet closer together. (laughs) Amen. Amen. God is good. So good to be with you. Thank you uh, for allowing us to come and being being a part of this day. I also want to thank you for sending all the help over the last 30 days. Uh, we've been able to get away and get refreshed. How many know that's important? Amen? Amen. And so I really appreciate that. As I was praying for this day today, I was reminded of something that uh, I heard several years ago. Uh, Somebody I knew was telling us a story. She had been very prosperous in real estate. God had blessed her mightily, and so she had several properties and her son was pastoring a church in the Sterling Heights area. And unfortunately, he passed away. And uh, when when he passed away, she filled in. She was a teacher and a preacher, and and she more or less just did uh, executive type of work in the church. And uh, they had three churches, one in uh, New Baltimore, one in Sterling Heights, and one in Florida. And so she started to fill in because her, her son had passed away and she sensed God calling her to pastor the church and she struggled with it because she was more administrative and that kind of giftings but she knew that God was calling her to be a pastor but yet she struggled with it and uh, she had a conversation with God 
And she said, God, I'm, I know that you're calling me to be a pastor of a church, but I'm really struggling with it, Lord. I'm really struggling with it because, well, God, I know you know this, but I'm going to tell you anyways. I'm a woman. <laughs> she says, God, I know you're calling me to be a pastor and to pastor this church, but God, don't you know I'm a woman? And she heard God say to her that I am the God that doesn't care about the parts, but only look upon the hearts. And I wrote that down this morning out of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, which says, The Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So whether you're male or female, amen, Cynthia and Bond are free, Italian or Scottish, <laughs> God, God looks on the heart, amen, amen, God bless you. I just want to share one scripture um, that I, as I was reading in the word this morning, and I, I felt that this was for you today, Kate, it's for all of us, but Jesus looked at his disciples one day and he said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And he said, I'm sending you and you're going to bear much fruit. And it's not only that you'll bear much fruit, but that fruit will remain. And we pray that Yes, is we minister in the churches that we have fruit, but we want fruit that will remain. And so he's called you. We didn't choose him, but he chose us. And he's anointed you. And I believe that just as we just heard that everything you put your hand to will prosper. We're here for you. We're here to pray for you. We're here to give you any strength that we can. Just call, call us up and chat them. And we'd love to hear from you from time to time how you're doing. And, and we're appreciative for what you're going to do here in Leamington. It's going to be wonderful. And we're with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When I came to immigrate to Canada, my application was sent back to me, written in pencil on the back of the last page was denied. There was no reason. So I went to the Canadian Embassy in Detroit, and they wouldn't give me the time of day. I met this young man at a dinner for pastors. He said, oh, I'll fix you up. I know all the ins and outs of that. I just did it. And he gave me all his papers and everything. We reapplied. We were approved. And we ended up getting the same agent for our interview that he had. Now, you know they change them all the time. I noticed her name, and it was an Italian girl. And uh, I remember Italian names pretty well. Yeah. I said I remember Italian names pretty well. Okay. And uh, when we got done with our interview, I, I didn't want to tell her that I knew someone she knew. But when we were all done, I said, I know someone you know. Who is it? Bill and Jan Farner. Oh, how are they? We lose touch with them. And I so appreciated them. She remembered them. And then she told us, you're approved, but there would be some things. She told us the whole deal. And the reason she remembered them is because she was trying to get residency in U.S. It had a place there. It got broken into. Scared the living daylights out of the girl. And those two prayed for her, ministered to her, blessed her, impacted her life. God moves in mysterious ways, huh? Praise the Lord. So we've been friends a long time. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Pastor Jeff. Pastor Jeff, down in Indiana, would you come and share a few minutes, please? Well, greetings, everybody. Greetings to our dear friends there at Leamington Christian Center, family and friends and guests. And hello to you, Pastor Kate, as well as Pastor Dan. I would have liked to have been there with you today, a special day for you, but it's a great honor to be able to record and send this to you for all of you to watch. And Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come. I pray, Lord, that my words are your words and out of my spirit would flow rivers of living water by the Holy Spirit. 
We just ask you to come, Lord, and touch everyone's life, all that are within the sound of our voice today. It's a special day. It's a day of honor. It's a day of promotion. It's a day of new beginnings. It's a day of future built on the past, standing solidly on the foundation of what you have built, Lord, and what you have done there in Leamington Christian Center through Pastor Dan Tamburo, his family, uh, the leaders there, the body of Christ there. There's a great anointing in your house. You carry revival anointing, and you have touched many, many lives. Today, Kate, we honor you. We celebrate what God has done in your life and how God has ministered to you in your life. I've known you and your father many years now, your family. It's been an honor knowing you. We love you. We're proud of you. We see God's hand on you and God's call on your life, and there's fruit. It's obvious. And the Lord Jesus Christ has given you as a gift unto the body of Christ to help train, equip, prepare. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, it's Jesus that calls us to the ministry. We should aspire to become more like Jesus. That should be the desire of our heart and to want to serve mankind, even to desire to be an elder. But it is the Lord Jesus Christ and His sovereignty that calls, selects, chooses, and sends a gift that represents Him to the body of Christ. And Kate, you are such a person. You're a worshiper. You love God. You have demonstrated wisdom in your life, and you walk in great anointing. You will lead well, and you will do well. I'd like to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, and He, Jesus, gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And we know, Kate, that you will do an excellent job in all of these areas. So we ask the Lord to bless you today and for this day to be a very special day. I would like to read another verse out of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And here Paul is writing to Timothy in his youth. And though you are wise and you have been involved with ministry all your Christian life, Kate, God has prepared you for such a time as this. I love the Word of God. I love to read it. I love to study it. And I really enjoy preaching it. When I preach, I say to folks, let's go to this text. And here's the title of the message today. And I like to read the Word of God with life and enthusiasm and passion and zeal. Perhaps maybe one of the greatest compliments I ever received came out of Canada, and I had the privilege of working with a pastor, an apostle that I admire, respect, and appreciate his friendship. And I had the opportunity to minister to several pastors. And when it was over with, the last night, the last service, altar time was finished, and people were beginning to go home. There was snow on that night. And some of the older men who'd been in ministry all their lives, most of them had passed on responsibilities to others. They were enjoying the fruits of their labors. We value them. We appreciate their wisdom. But they came to me and said something along these lines, if, it, if not exact. Pastor, we so appreciate your zeal for the Word and your passion for the Word. You, you put a hunger in us just when you would read it and look to it. It's so full of life. You pass that on to us. And we just want to say thank you. I said, oh, what an honor. Thank you. I asked him to pray for me there at that pastor's altar. It was a wonderful experience. And so, Kate, I would, I would charge you with this. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study the Word of God. <laughs> And show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of God. It's important in the body of Christ that we learn to work hard as unto the Lord, but always demonstrating to those following us, it's not the hard work that God is where we are, it's His grace. But we had the quality of being good workers, hard workers, as unto Jesus. And as a faithful worker, servant in the body of Christ, called to equip the body of Christ and to teach them how to love one another, you've come through tested and tried. Always study. 
do your best as unto the Lord Jesus Christ. The ability through study to accurately and skillfully teach the Word of God is very important. All the pastors I know that I work with in Canada, I consider it a great honor to know them, men and women, apostles, pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, all the gifts of the fivefold ministry are there. And they're skillful. They're skillful with the Word. They're wise in their leadership. It's been an honor to work with them. <clears throat> because of what Jesus did for us, we've already, as it were, been approved. But our study is pleasing unto God. We're looking for Father's approval, not man's. Oh, we want to love the people that we're called to minister to and called to lead and called to pastor. But my study is for His approval and to please Him. The ability to rightly divide the Word of God is important. So keep on loving God, Kate, and be a worshiper from your heart, the written Word as well as the living Word. I am recovering, getting stronger every day, and so is my wife. And Kate, we want you to know that we love you and we're proud of you. We consider it an honor to always work with you. I started working with you well over 20 years ago, and you were just a kid in the faith, so to speak, but always teachable and always came with a pure heart. You always put on humility, and when I had suggestions or advice to how to move into the glory, how to see the glory, how to lead people. Though you were gifted, anointed, and called, you were always teachable. Brother Johnny is home with the Lord, of course. But Johnny and I went to Canada a lot of times and ministered to a lot of people together as well as separately. Johnny was very proud of you. And he sowed a lot into you, and you have a lot to offer. So we say, may the Lord bless you, Kate, and may this be a special day for you for your family, for your friends, and for the local congregation there at Leamington Christian Center. I'd like to pray a blessing over you, Kate, as well as your local church family. Pastor Dan, good job. You and your wife are to be commended. Built a strong ministry there and helped establish it. You've been a father and a mother to many. You've reached out as an apostle to the nations. It's been an honor to work with you. You're a man of integrity. May you continue to be blessed of the Lord in your ministry. May you and Kate and the church all just continue to grow together. In your relationship, may it be strengthened. As boundaries change, as that relationship changes, may it always be for the better. Thanks for setting a good example for us, Dan. I say that respectfully as a friend. It's a special day. We should all celebrate. Our words should be filled with life. Our hearts should be filled with praise. Look at what God has done. What an honor to bring a generation along that's hungry for God and serves God with all their heart. Leads with integrity. Let's extend our hand towards Pastor Kate, if you will. Kate, the Lord says you're a forerunner. You carry a forerunner anointing. And a forerunner often clears the path and makes a way where there is no path and there is no way. But the Holy Spirit will lead you, and the Word will be a lamp and a light unto your feet. And when you see no path, fear not, for the Lord says, I will go before you, and I will be with you, and I will make a way. I have given my angels charge over you. And when you walk through, many will be able to follow, for the path will be smooth, the path will be straight. The path will be cleared of all stumbling blocks, and you will lead them into the glory of the Lord and the presence of the Lord. You will lead with the song of the Lord. You will sing with your understanding, and you will sing in the Spirit. You will lead with the wisdom of God. You will lead with the Word of God. Your love for the written Word and the living Word shall be seen in your actions and ministries to mankind to women, to men, to children. You will walk with no partiality, but you will be firm and you will be strong. At the same time, 
you will have compassion and you will have mercy. The Lord has surrounded you with godly men that are strong and godly women that are courageous. They will be there. They will sing with you. They will encourage you. And when at times you would rather hold back and have others go on, they will pat you on the back and say, no, you lead the way. And they will follow you, encouraging you. You will bring glory to the Lord. And the army that follows you will be blessed. They will be well rested. They will be well fed. And they will be well watered. They will be well cared for. And they will be healthy. And the journey will be a journey of delight. In the name of Jesus, we say yes and amen, Kate. And we ask the Lord to seal these words. We love you. We're proud of you. And on behalf of the pastors of Whitehorse and the church family here at Whitehorse Christian Center, we look forward to seeing you again, Kate, and having you join us at the keyboard helping us during ministry time and worship time. God bless you. Church family, enjoy your day and celebrate. Write this day down in your journal and write things that God has put in your heart. Write down prophetic words and words of knowledge. May God give you discernment of spirits and may you be wise. Walk in the wisdom of God as well as the knowledge of God. Until we meet again, and I look forward to being with you all, God bless you. Thank you for giving me the privilege of being a part of your lives today and what God is doing. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. <clears throat> you may not have realized, <clears throat> but this message, this service is not just for Kate. It's a special day for her and for the church. But every message that's coming out is for all of us. Because every father here is called to be a leader. Every mother here is called to be a leader. Every son and daughter here will be called. I have a friend, the name of his ministry is Fathers Producing Sons to be Fathers. We all have a mandate to pass on an influence. So every message that's going out today isn't something that's not for you, it's for you. I want to share a few minutes. I'm going to have Pastor Paul share a few minutes and then we're going to pray over Kate and we'll let you go. But God's moving today. I have three things to say to my daughter, Kate. As after today, she will be my pastor. And I'm well able to submit to her. My wife trained me well. <laughs> I think she's watching too anyway, praise the Lord. I think she laughed. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is tell you, please get up from that chair and go sit there. Praise the Lord. You can be seated again. We only allowed two really reserved seats. One was Elsie's. No one could tell her she couldn't sit where she was going to sit. But that was mine and your mom's seat, so that's where you belong. Praise the Lord. So the first thing I want to say is, we're here on earth. We need to be influenced. We've been influenced. You've been influenced. And you need to remember because some of you have had a word a long time ago and it hasn't come to pass. And in your mind it's gone, but not in God's. Because God doesn't work in time. There is no time in God. It's hard for us to understand it. We can't, but it's the truth. But Paul said to Timothy, remember the word that was over you a long, long time ago and you're not walking in it, but it's still there right now. That word is still there. And listen, if you've had a word in your life and a promise, you have to understand promises. Many people get shipwrecked and leave God because they get a word and it doesn't come to pass. A word is a promise. You got to work with a promise. Amen. 
you got to work with a promise. But if the person giving the promise is good, then the promise is good. And God gives promises, and his promises are good. You were influenced, I was thinking about it, by the Hart Brothers, by Bob Shadows, by Johnny Beard, by the man sitting in that seat right there, two seats away from you. Pastor Jeff, Bobby and Martha, Pastor Leonard Gardner. We've had some of the greatest ministers, Sergio Scataglini, Pedro Ibarra, who? Wild Bill, God. Wild Bill. Wild Bill. You just reminded me. Wild Bill's daughter sending you a greeting. May you, your ever-loving hand be upon Kate. As you anoint her for the office, Lord, grant her wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Keep her ever in the path you have set before her. May she never veer to the right or left but to the high calling of Christ. May she ever be up to the task, especially in those times of stress and distress. For surely, Lord, we all face times of uncertainty, but you are the constant in our lives. Guide her in all truth. Show her your glory. Grant her much God-given favor. Keep her whole and let her experience your divine love in her life at every juncture. Lord, I speak your sustainable power. Be ever present in and around her at all times. In Yeshua's name, amen. That's from Luann. Wild Bill's daughter. As was said, Moses imparted to Joshua. Elijah imparted to Elisha. Jesus imparted to his disciples. Hmm? Paul imparted to Timothy. Now look at this one. Some woman spent all our money and couldn't get well. And she said in her heart, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be well. You think that Jesus was God and he was the son of God, but he became a man. So he didn't know everything. He only knew what Holy Spirit told him. That may blow your philosophy, but it's the truth. A woman touched the hem of his garment and he said, who touched me? He didn't know. He did not know who touched him. Father orchestrated it that way because Father wanted her to tap into a scripture for us to understand. If we can touch the hem of his garment, we can be made whole. Amen. You don't have to have a sovereign word from God, though we love them and though we need them. All you need is grab a hold of the word of God and grab a hold of the promise and you'll get it. So he said, who touched me? He didn't know. And the reason they said, well, there's sleeper all over the place. He goes, no, I felt something go out of me. There was a funeral. Jesus wrecked funeral processions. There was a funeral. Trouble come. They threw the body. It happened to be Elisha's grave. When the body touched the bones, the man came alive. Anointings are imparted. We've been influenced. You've been influenced. Whether we remember them or not, you've been influenced. Your mother influenced you. She influenced me for sure. And you need to understand, you've been influenced and you've received. It's a promise. It's a promise. Getting the word of isn't enough. It's only the beginning, but you got to work with the promise and let yourself be influenced. The second thing I'll say is people influence don't come in perfect packages. Just mine. No. No. You know. You've seen. You've seen church splits. You've seen conniving. You've seen the worst of the worst through your life. You've seen conniving and lying and hypocrisy and lack of integrity and you've hated it. And you know that you wouldn't tell anyone but you know that your mother and I aren't perfect. And so the other thing, even though we've been influenced, we need to purge ourselves. We need to purge ourselves. 
We can't go by reputation. <clears throat> we can't go by our anointing. <clears throat> our anointing is God-given. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. He gives it to us. Our job is to keep ourselves clean and to make ourselves better. <clears throat> In the last few years, Psalm 51 has been close to my heart. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. I'm 60, 10, and more and more I see things in my life that should have been cleaned up a long time ago. They're not yet. Sometimes I get discouraged about it, but then I remember what I preached. You know, when you preach, you're not preaching, you're preaching to yourself. It's the end that counts. It's what people come to. It's not the start off, it's what you're going to. Just yesterday, Lord, I see this in me, and it ain't right. Purge me, Lord. Cleanse me. Create in me a clean heart. I need a clean heart, God. So you've been influenced by some of the greatest anointings that there could be. But remember, keep purging yourself. Keep cleaning yourself. Never be afraid to take advice from the smallest child or the weakest person. Don't count them out because... They don't even come to church. But whatever you hear, don't go by the messenger. Go by the message. And take it before the Lord and say, Lord, if this is from you, let me take it in no matter who it comes from. The third thing I want to say is influence. Influence. Now is your time to influence. You know me. You know how I did things, how I do things. Don't do anything the way I did things, carte blanche. You got to be you. You got to be you. You were born for a reason. You were born for a purpose. You, you can't live your life for somebody else, by somebody else. What he said there is probably the most important words. You only need to please one. You only need to please one. If you please that one, it'll work out whether everybody leaves or not. It doesn't matter. There's one man I saw preach that preached that way, and I've never seen another man in my life, and there are probably many, but Sergio Scataglini, we had him in to Migration Hall. I was so happy to get him to come. He's a friend. I consider him a friend. No one was listening to him. I'm sitting there with the responsibility of that whole message with another pastor, and I'm thinking, oh my God, did we make a mistake? Because the people were talking, they weren't even listening, and he just seemingly didn't even care. He just was preaching his message. When he got done, gave the altar call, about 80% of the people ran down. I thought, he preached to God, and God did the work. Please the audience of one. Influence, influence. You know, I said that Moses passed on an anointing to, to Joshua, but I found the key. And if you could put Exodus 33, 11 up on the board, I know I gave you other scriptures, but for the sake of time, I'm going to finish. Exodus 33, 11, I think is a great key in this anointing, the ability to pass it on. Exodus 33, 11, and while it's coming up there, I'm going to come down here to finish. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But look at this little part that says so much about a life. But his servant Joshua, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. See, there's people who follow people, but there's people who follow people because the Lord told them to follow that person. And they'll only follow that person in the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's people that follow people. And there's people who are following people, but they're following the Lord. They're not really following people. And those of you that are here at LCC, follow. Don't follow Kate. Follow the Lord and you'll follow Kate. Do you hear me? He didn't depart out of the camp. His boss left. But he had a relationship with God that was past being a people pleaser. 
When no one was looking, when no one was around, he had his face on the ground in the presence of God. And so I want to pass on some things to you right now to finish my part. And the first thing I want to pass on to you is my staff. It's a shepherd's staff. And uh, it's got a few nicks and knocks in it because I had to bang a few people on the head. <laughs> and you see the man that just gave it to me? He's endeavored to be a helper to me. And if you allow him, he will be a helper to you. Because God is raising him up as a helper and, 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 and a, a prospering person in the places that God's going to lead him and guide him. And they're not maybe all in the church, but they're needed in a team. So it'll take a few good blows, so don't worry about it. The second thing I want to pass on to you is my prayer shawl. Your mother and you bought this for me at a Jewish store. And I put it on me many times. Not lately, but I love the blue cord in the bottom, and you know what the blue cord signifies. Interwoven in the blue cord was the presence of God always to be known. And so I give it to you because there were times and they may come to you, I hope not, when it looks like all hell broke loose. It looked like we wouldn't make it. There are times that look like we wouldn't make it. There are times when the devil says, LCC's done. And I haven't always honored it. But when I honored the prayer, God came through. God came through. God came through. The other thing I want to give you, and this is from the church to you, give it to her yourself. Because there's your friend and your other helper, one of them. And we honor you today and congratulate you today. The last thing I pass on to you is the vision. It's not finished. God said, and you know all the vision. I won't go into it now. We put it on visuals. Build a Holy Spirit church. I wish we would have gone further, and I wish we would have done more, but now it's in your hands. We build a foundation. We build a foundation. Now build on it. Build on it. Build on it. Because we want to see this town impacted for Christ. We're not the only thing, but we, God made us a part of the thing. And our part of this thing is to influence this town with the Holy Spirit and see people saved and see people run to the altar and see people come to Jesus. Right now, the devil's helping us all he can because he's making this world so full of fear and so full of everything else. People need to understand they need Jesus. They needed to know it before trouble come, but right now, people really need to know they need Jesus. Amen? Amen? So I submit to you that foundation. And I say to you, I'm praying for you. I'll do whatever I can to help. I'll submit to you as I have tried to. I was a little shocked this morning as I ran into my office, and it wasn't my office anymore. <laughs> I'll get used to it. Praise the Lord. As you have honored me, you've honored me. I've been honored. Honor the new pastor. Even though she is my daughter and I'm proud of her, she's our new pastor. You are my pastor now. And uh, I'm not done preaching whenever you ask me. I'm not done ministering. I'm not done taking any of you on mission trips. I'm not done with anything in ministry because I don't think you ever retire from ministry. But I am retiring from pastoring. And I'm honored to have you as my new pastor. Praise the Lord. Pastor Paul.
Thank you. On behalf of Independent Assemblies of God Canada, it's my privilege to be with you in Leamington Christian Center. Yes, God is good. And it is my privilege to be able to uh, lead the part of the installation of your new pastor. And uh, we haven't been able to practice this, so we're going to just work our way through it, all right? It's been a very moving service to feel the Holy Spirit working in our midst and uh, to see the transition that is occurring. We've already said yes to the call of God, and so we're so thankful. So we meet together in the presence of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to recognize his call upon Reverend Kate Tenbero. Called to the office, the position of pastor of the Leamington Christian Center. Kate has been called to this responsibility of stewardship, not merely to be servants of men, and she will serve, but primarily, as you have heard in the service this morning, a servant of God, a servant of Christ. She has the duty to select in this place of responsibility. She's been faithful for 31 years in this congregation. Now she's ready to stand and pledge her intent to fulfill the duties entrusted into her care. And so let us likewise, Leamington Christian Center, support your pastor. You've heard Pastor Dan challenge you to do that. But I'm going to add that I want you to use encouraging words. Words are very important. I believe in generational blessings. I believe in generational anointings. I believe that you're going to see a greater demonstration of the power of God. But it also, we recognize the importance of words and you using encouraging words for your new pastor. I would also encourage you to be prayerful. Remember her on a regular basis in your prayers. In a few minutes, I'm going to challenge you, but I encourage you to pray. Would you bow your heads, please? Almighty God, we thank you that you have called us to your church, and you've given us tasks to perform. Help us to be aware that you have entrusted us with accomplishing great things for the advancement of your kingdom on earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon this, your servant, who is called to the office of pastor within this congregation. Endue her with heavenly wisdom that she might have the mind of Christ in the decisions that she makes. Help her to employ the gifts which you have prepared for her. May Leamington Christian Center be blessed by her service and may she find joy in serving you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to ask Pastor Kate, and could we have all of the clergy in the building come and join us, please? You've been selected for this position, the office of a pastor. And we have confidence that you will prove yourself to be a workwoman that needeth not to be ashamed. It's a great honor to be chosen to administer and to supervise the work of the church. Now you present yourself in response to the call of God to be installed into the active duty of senior pastor. It's appropriate that you now answer the following questions and pastor, do you willingly accept the responsibility of this office? Yes. <laughs> do you promise that you're going to perform the duties as diligently and effectively as possible? Yes. We endeavor to lead a Christian life and set an example, a proper example for others to follow. Yes. Will you agree to, be, to live in harmony with Leamington Christian Center and Independent Assemblies of God Canada? Yes. And will you do, with the help of God, promote peace and unity and effectiveness of the church in cooperation with all of the officers and foster a blending of every effort to fulfill the mission statement of this church? Yes. 
Will you daily pray for your church, for the leaders? Will you be effective in carrying out the Lord's great commission? Yes. With pastor here, congregation, would you stand with me, please? I know we're going to pray as a group over her in just a few moments. But this is recognizing the call of God upon her life. The office of the pastor. She has other offices as well, as an evangelist, as a teacher, as a prophetess. But today we're recognizing the office the office of the pastor. Lord, you've called. And Pastor Kate has said yes to each of the questions that we have asked and is accepting the office of the pastor. We ask your Lord that you'll grant grace and strength to properly fulfill the duties and the responsibilities required. And as we listen to Pastor Bill and Pastor Jen, we recognize that it's not based upon gender, male or female, but it is the call that you have placed. And today, may every hesitation be removed. And we pray, dear Lord, that as she submits to the call of God. And as we recognize the call of God upon her life, I pray to the Lord that you will bless her and that you'll use her. Congregation, you're members of the body of Christ. We challenge you to recognize the call of God upon Sister Kate. As Reverend Kate is selected as pastor of Leamington Christian Center, God in his sovereignty has arranged for her selection for this service. It's now our obligation to support Pastor Kate by our loyalty and our prayers, seeking with her and for her consecration from on high that she may be empowered for this call with reverence and faithfulness to the glory of God. So as members and friends of Leamington Christian Center, to whose service this pastor is now pledging herself, will you promise your loyal cooperation, prayer support in home and in the church? If so, would you answer? Yes, I will. And then the commission to Pastor Kate, in accordance to the discipline of Leamington Christian Center, and by the authority vested in me as the minister of Jesus Christ, as the General Secretary of Independent Assemblies, I hereby solemnly commission you as pastor, called to the high privilege and of leadership of Leamington Christian Center. So as you have been chosen, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, to him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, authority, through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Extend your hand towards her. We lay hands on her in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Senior Pastor of Leamington Christian Center. Jan, please pray. 
Father, I thank you for this beautiful woman of God. And Father, like Solomon, when he prayed, he didn't ask for riches or honor, but he asked for wisdom to lead the people well. So Father, this day we say, grant unto her wisdom beyond her years. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, that every task that she would put her hand to, everything that she would encounter, Lord God, every obstacle, oh God, the wisdom of the Lord will come upon her. And she will say, oh, I did not think about that before. But yet the Lord, the Lord gave me a dream. The Lord gave me the answer. And Father, I thank you today for enduing her with wisdom beyond her years years, O oh God, a tongues of fire to be upon her, O oh God, a baptism, a fresh baptism of your spirit, O oh God. And Lord, I thank you that she will move into this office with confidence, the confidence that only comes from you, Lord, for we know that we can do nothing in our own strength. But Lord, you said it's not by our power, it's not by our might, but it's by your spirit. Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And Lord, we say yes, Lord, to you. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that your presence would just be with her continually. Lord, as she would open her mouth, that you will fill it. And Lord, we thank you that as she leads the people, whether in song or whether she is giving a message, Father, that as she opens her mouth, you will fill it. So we give you the thanks. We give you the praise for her. We support her. We pray for her. We encourage her, Lord, to go forth and be all that you can be for the Lord. For God has called you. We, we did not choose him, but he has chosen us. And we accept it, Lord. In your mighty name we pray, Lord. Amen. Baylin, I want you to pray a short prayer in Spanish. Because we will have the nations. Come, pray in Spanish. Padre, te damos gracias, Señor Jesús, por este día, Señor, pero gracias, Señor, por tu sierva, Señor. Gracias, Señor, por la unción que has puesto sobre ella, Señor Jesús. Te honramos en este día, Señor, y te pedimos que tu unción, Señor, sea guiándola. Sea, Señor, dándole instrucciones en la noche, Señor Jesús, sea ministrándola, sea guiándola, Espíritu Santo de Dios, te pedimos que una unción poderosa caiga sobre ella, Señor Jesús, y que la unja, Señor, que la use, Señor Jesús, dale instrucciones en la noche, Señor, dale palabra tuya, Espíritu Santo de Dios, úngela en el nombre de Cristo Jesús, gracias por las oraciones que su madre hizo sobre ella y que ahora se está viendo Señor Jesús gracias por los frutos que tú estás poniendo en ella Espíritu Santo de Dios llévala Señor aún más profundo contigo llévale aún más profundo Señor y pon gente Señor que la honre pon gente Señor que la sirva Señor Jesús y te doy gracias por su vida en el nombre de Cristo Jesús Amén Bobby, I want you to pray the fire of the anointing over Pastor Kate. Father, we thank you today for this occasion. Lord, we pray for a fresh love, oh God, of God's people. Lord, we pray for wisdom from above. And we pray for the fire of God's anointing to rest upon her to destroy the yoke off God's people. Lord, anoint her. Let your presence come up on her in a supernatural day from this moment on. In the name of Jesus. And Kate, everything good that God has ever put in me and your mother, I imparted into you right now in the name of Jesus. And more than that, all that he's ordained for you, as Pastor Bobby said, it was before you were born in your mother's womb. I pray in the name of Jesus, the impartation of God's anointing into your life more than ever before, a multiplication of the gifts of the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And it's, it's my privilege to say now, you are my pastor. She is your new pastor, Pastor Kate. Right there. Um, Tal vez puedes interpretarme. Pastor K, I am so happy. God bless you. I remember when God talked with you one night. I remember your dress, your you 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 was speaking to us that how God called you. I think I, I, I speak English, I forgot. <laughs> uh, uh, God told you, you will be, you will be the right hands for Pastor Dan. I remember that. You was praying for the people. You was praying for the people. It, 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 when you pray, the people was falling down because God was with you. The anointing from God is on you, inside you, over you. You are going up because you are faithful. You are so faithful. You are faithful. You behave. If you behave, you go up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand for Kate. Before I have Kate close us in prayer, I want to thank Pastor Paul for taking the time to be here. This man worked seven days a week from early morning till night. I don't know. Ever ready batteries have nothing over him. <laughs> true. It's true. Thank you. We respect you. We honor you. And I know she truly respects you. Truly. Bill and Jan, thank you for coming. Drove all the way from Chatham. You were gone for a while out of your pulpit. I didn't think both of you would be here. It's an honor. It's a true honor. Thank you. Um, just two quick things before we close, and Kate will say, say whatever she wants. She's the pastor. <laughs> it's been on my mind. We know some children in Uganda, in India, in Nepal, in Bolivia, <clears throat> that needs sponsored. And we used to do that with children. And so I've asked my pastor about it and willing to organize something where you would have a picture in contact with a child overseas uh, to be able to send monthly support to get them into school. Because many of them have to pay for schooling. So if you're interested in something like that, let the office know. We'll make arrangements. And I forget what the other thing is. <laughs> Do you know what the other thing was? <laughs> this time I don't. <laughs> this time you don't. <clears throat> well, I just say this. I had Baylin pray so that you would receive an anointing to gather the nations. Because Johnny prophesied we would have the nations here. And I think we only have 18 and we need about 50 more. So I pray an anointing comes on you to gather all the nations of all the colors of all the ethnic groups and bring them into the house of God to worship together. So we practice for heaven. Because that's how heaven's going to be. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you all. You can go ahead and sit down. Somebody told me I was getting weaponized. <laughs> um, 
I laughed a little bit at the first question that Pastor Paul asked me because when I was talking to him the other day on the phone, I said, what would happen if I said no? <laughs> I said, maybe I'll just mix it up for fun. Um, I don't know if I have the appropriate words yet. Um, and for many of you, that's the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> but I know that... Um, I know that God has great things for us. Even a, a few, I think it was a few months ago now, it feels like yesterday, but a few months ago now on a Tuesday night prayer, the Lord spoke something into my heart. Um, and he said, when victory comes, it comes for the house. And I know that that has uh, layers of meaning, but I know that today isn't, about me because if I disobey the Lord the Lord will replace me with somebody else it's always all about him but it's about what we're going to do together for him and so the vision for our church has always been to be a place where the Holy Spirit has his way where people can be gathered together to be discipled and to be built up so that they can go to the nations and gather more. That has always been the vision of our house. That will always be the vision of our house. We pray the Lord expand it. We pray the Lord bring us into greater understanding of what he has for us and the times and the seasons of what he has for us. I don't think it's coincidental that the property next door all of a sudden in the last 10 days came into place. I don't know if you can fully grab that it's been over 10 years that we have been actively working on making a deal and every time the door was slammed in our face. And I think it was even just a few months ago that we asked Fernando to contact again and see, is there any movement? Is there any open door? And the answer was no. And then all of the sudden, there was a phone call that said, I'm ready. And we said, let's move. <laughs> it may have felt like a suddenly, but it was a suddenly that was over 10 years in the making. Because God is doing something, and I know that even as different ones spoke about fruitfulness, the thing that the Lord really has been speaking to me is that it's time for us to cultivate fruitfulness. That I am a first fruit of what God is doing in you. He wants to bring forth fruit in your life that will impact our community, will impact our nation, and will impact the nations. So get ready to be fruitful, get ready to arise, get ready to step up higher, get ready to have more responsibility on your hands, get ready to say yes to what God is going to do through you. None of us in ourself can answer the call, but by the grace of God, we will. And we will stand together and do what God has for this church family to do. Not just for our community and our family, but also to wherever he sends us. And the God has placed the nations on our heart. I think maybe around half of us weren't even born in Canada. God has placed us together. And though some of us have come from some crazy backgrounds, <laughs> He's meshed us together so we don't look in the natural, we look in the spirit of what God is doing and we say yes to what he has for us. Amen. Amen. Everybody bow your head. I feel like there's someone here that needs this before you leave here. If you've never officially asked Jesus to be your savior, we didn't preach a salvation message, but he's here. 
Or if you asked him at one time and you're far, far away and you need to get renewed, I want to pray for you right quickly before Kate closes. While the heads are bowed, I want you to raise your hand so I can see if there are people here because I feel it in my heart. Raise your hand to the Lord. After you raise it, you can put it down. I see those hands. There was four, five, six. Any others? Say, include me in the prayer. I need to be right with Jesus. I want to make sure I'm right with him. Seven, eight, anyone else? Nine. I'm glad I asked. I'm glad I remembered. Say, I, I know I'm not right with Jesus. I, I, I can't. Don't say this, I'll get ready later, I'll try better later. No, you don't ever try. You just want a Savior, you need a Savior, you receive the Savior, and He helps you. Anyone else here say, I need a Savior in my life. Pray for me. Okay, I thank God for nine hands. If you raised your hand, I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, I believe you love me, and I believe you are the Savior. And I need a Savior. Forgive me for all my sins and wrongs. I open my heart and make my decision to receive you as my personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life and help me every day to live in your love and have a hunger for your word. Amen. You can look up. If you prayed that prayer and meant it, Pastor Derek, raise your hand. If you need a Bible, you need any instruction, you need to be on our communication with our app or our email, see him, and we'll take care of it. The more you obey the Lord from now on, the more blessed you'll be. The first step in salvation is getting baptized. Get baptized. Get a Bible. Come into the fellowship with the saints. Everything you do in obedience to the word will cause your life to be more blessed. Pastor. Well, if you would stand with me, we're going to close in prayer. And uh, we will be praying for all of the children and all those of you uh, returning back to school. You need prayer more than ever. And we will be standing with you and praying for you. Father, we thank you for today. Even though it's been a different service, we know that your hand has been upon it. And so we thank you. We're so thankful for your presence. We don't take your presence for granted, but we so love to be in your presence. And so we're thankful that you were here with us today. We're thankful for, for Pastor Jeff and Pastor Bobby and Pastor Martha who sent their greetings, though they could not be physically with us. It felt as if they were right here. And so, Lord, we ask that you would bless them in today in their services. And, Father, as it's now my responsibility, I bless the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord put his countenance upon you. Let him be gracious to you. Let the Lord give you rest from all of your enemies. And may he lift you up. May he raise you up. May his grace and his favor overshadow you. And may his mercy and his love surround you all the days of your life. Lord, I bless this people in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for what you are doing as we walk together arm in arm into this new season. We have glimpses, but we haven't seen yet what you're going to do. But we are excited to move forward into what you have for us with your blessing on us. And everybody said... Amen. Be blessed. Remember, there's no service tonight. Spend time with your family. Enjoy the nice weather that we have. And we'll see you on Tuesday night at prayer.
Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God
Of the goodness of. 